Welcome. We are redoing a section of the virtual tour of the Dan River Basin today, part two, North Carolina. We had a little technical difficulties when we did it last week, and T has agreed to come on and do a spotlight on the Chincapin Trail. Welcome, T. Thank you. All right. So just as a reminder, this is hosted by the Dan River Basin Association. We serve 3,300 square miles, which includes 16 counties, both in Virginia and North Carolina, everywhere the Dan River flows and its tributaries. We have three major priorities that we focus on on our mission, and that's recreation, education, and stewardship. We have lots of fun things to do and lots of things to learn, um, and you can learn all about these things on our website. Please visit it at danriver.org. So T, with that being said, let's get started. Again, we are down here in North Carolina near Wentworth at the Chincapin Trail. Welcome, T. Thank you very much. Welcome, T. Butler. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Chincapin Walking Trail, a 1.6 mile loop in central Rockingham County that has been named a National Recreation Trail. See chinkapintrail.org for information about it, including directions to the trail. The trail is on the Upper Piedmont Research Station, owned by North Carolina State University. The main study subject is the heritage herd of Black Angus cattle started in the 1940s. The trail is an eBird hotspot and a member of the North Carolina Birding Trail with nearly 150 species of birds identified, chiefly because of the buried habitat. Woodland birds include the red-headed woodpecker that's on the left, while herons and egrets frequent the wetlands, and fields support chipping sparrows and eastern bluebirds who nest in the many bluebird houses along the trail. Beginning our walk on the farm road, we pass a hay barn and the bull pasture. And we soon reach mature forest recognized by the North Carolina Her National Heritage Program. Leashed, well-behaved pets are always welcome on the trail. You'll see lots of dogs who regularly bring their people to walk the trail. Rhododendron beside the trail is planted by the Pims, who owned the farm beginning in the 1920s. This is a spring variety, but summer rhododendrons are beginning to bloom now. I just saw some this morning. At the bottom of the hill is the rock dam, built of stone quarried on the site, and faced with five millstones. The observation deck allows you to see Jeff Penn's poem set in the middle of the dam, which created Betsy Pond. Jeff and Betsy Penn's portraits are on the information sign beside the dam, which is overlooked by the summer house or gazebo, with millstone tables and stone benches. A wildflower rock garden decorates the knoll. The Penns used to have brunch here with their friends. A board, boardwalk runs beside Betsy Pond, flanked by mountain laurel that the pens planted. It reaches the pump house that carried water from the pond up to the mansion's gardens and livestock. Notice the light pole, one of many that surrounded the pond where the pens entertained guests in the evening, Great Gatsby style. Just upstream on Betsy Branch is Little Niagara, a waterfall created by a low dam named in honor of Betsy Penn's fortune, which came from Niagara Falls Power Company. Some days it's just a trickle, but after a big rain, we get a pretty good waterfall. We now enter a bamboo forest that provides welcome shade on a hot day. Bamboo on the left was planted by the Penns, and the more slender on the right is native bamboo. Further along is another boardwalk with one of several bridges that cross Betsy Branch. The upper pond is named Turkey Pond. Although geese, ducks, herons, and kingfishers join frogs, fish, and turtles here, no turkeys. At the head of Turkey Pond is one of several benches placed strategically along the trail, a great place to observe nature, meditate, or just take a break. As we go uphill, we reach the stone spring house, pictured on the left, where Betsy Branch begins and the partially restored stew site, where the Penns held picnics and served Jeff's famous Brunswick stew. His recipe is on the nearby information signboard. Now we've reached the trailhead next to the parking lot. We passed a pollinator garden whose flowers are just now coming up. Here we have a composting toilet with a solar powered exhaust fan. 
than a small shed for trash and recycling and the large informational kiosk. Like the other information signs along the trail, the beautiful sign boards here were designed by Brian Williams of Dan River Basin Association. Nearby are picnic tables shaded by a big pecan tree alongside another pollinator garden. Finally, on the side of the kiosk is a trail's quilt square created by stained glass artist Teresa Talley Phillips, who included a cow, a bluebird, a butterfly, bamboo, and the summer house. The Tickabin Trail celebrates the region's natural and cultural resources as a working research farm with unique historic structures that enhance a truly beautiful Piedmont landscape. It is lovely at any time of year. We hope you'll bring your friends and family and visit the Chinkapin Trail often. Thank you. Gee, thank you so much. Um, that was, uh, I want to go visit any very soon, very soon. Um, any last words before we click off? One thing I didn't show you is those signboards along the trail. There are three or four of them, but Brian did a beautiful, beautiful job designing them. I think you'll really enjoy them. There's just enough information on them to let you know what's going on around you. Well, you know the Dan River Basin has a special place in its heart for Chinkapin Trail. And Mostly yeah. because our founder has a special place in the heart for both of them. <laughs> well, Thanks. thank you so much. Uh, T, stay on. I'm going to stop um, recording now. Thank you for joining us, and hopefully we'll see you at our next webinar. Very good. I will. I'll be there.